I, 28-year-old female, am in a supposedly serious and committed relationship with my boyfriend, 33-year-old male. We have been dating since August of 2023 and became an official couple in June of 2024. We've been exclusive the entire time prior to us being official. Like every couple, we would have fights, but we would try our best to resolve whatever it is. He and I have both been cheated on in the past by our exes. He's been cheated on once. I've been cheated on multiple times. He admits to being very insecure about a lot of things. I admit that I have my own share of insecurities too, especially because of my past. I've been in therapy for almost two years now, trying to unlearn my destructive and self-sabotaging habits that I've acquired because of my past traumas. Still a work in progress. My boyfriend, on the other hand, is reluctant to go to therapy, and to be honest, it feels like he doesn't see the value in it based on his reactions whenever I try to bring it up. Bottom line is we both have issues. We're far from perfect, but we supposedly care about each other, so we're trying to make it work. My boyfriend has a guy friend that's single named Andy, not his real name. He was previously married, but his ex-wife cheated on him, so it's roughly been two to three years since that happened. Ever since, he's been actively trying to meet and hook up with women. Historically, even prior to us dating, he's been having my boyfriend wingman for him, since apparently he struggles to land women on his own. Last week, I spent Friday and Saturday with my boyfriend. Things were going well until he got drunk and started telling me about other women. He told me about this woman named Joanna that he had an interaction with years ago. He called her crazy and told me that she would randomly hit him up using different numbers or utilizing different channels. He mentioned blocking her everywhere because of this. I asked if she reached out to him recently. He said no. It was odd to me that he would randomly bring her up when I didn't ask and because it wasn't a topic of conversation. A few hours later, he randomly showed me an Instagram story of one of the girls he's following on Instagram. Her name was Tabitha. It's like he wanted me to tell him if she was attractive or not. The story was a selfie of a woman and said something along the lines of, check her out, asking what I think of her. Again, very odd. I was trying to take a nap, but he interrupted me by showing me her photo. I'm a very observant person, and at this point, I was starting to get annoyed because I'm trying to understand these odd and random tiny behaviors. I asked him why he was asking me what I thought, and he could tell I was starting to be irate. He just apologized and dodged the conversation I was trying to have and went to sleep which to me felt like he was avoiding conflict, even though it feels like he was trying to get a reaction out of me. He admits to putting me through different tests in the past to see how I react. That's why I'm assuming he was trying to get a reaction out of me. 10 p.m. comes around and he wakes up. I asked him about the things I've noticed and he was being dismissive of it. I know these are tiny, small things, but I'm very intuitive and my gut always tells me when something is off. We have a rule where we both can access each other's phones whenever we need to, to create some sort of security or assurance whenever we have weak moments. It's not a double standard. I can have access to his phone and he can have access to my phone. I saw him on Snapchat because a girl named Joanna messaged him. Because my gut was telling me something, I asked for his phone. There was a lot of resistance, but eventually I had it. I saw that he was speaking with this girl named Joanna. The conversation thread was empty. I had a feeling he possibly deleted it. Her message was, still creeping, and some laughing face emojis. As you may recall, I mentioned that he said he's blocked her in the past, but apparently he unblocked her and they're now friends on Snapchat. I confronted him about this, and he just played dumb, calling her crazy and stuff, all the while thinking, then why did you unblock her? He says he unblocked her during a big fight we had weeks ago and went on an unblocking spree with others as well. At this point, I'm already livid. My mind was thinking of all the worst things. I thought maybe he was entertaining her behind my back for a while now. I tried calling her on Snapchat using his phone. She never picked up. I also went ahead and messaged her again via his account. This is his girlfriend. How was he creeping? My message and calls were ignored. My gut is yelling at me internally at this point. Since I already had access to his phone, 
I checked his messages as well with his single friend, Andy. Lo and behold, I see their conversation, which was roughly less than a week ago, fairly recent. I see a screenshot of Andy messaging another girl named Lola, trying to hook my boyfriend up with her so they can go on a double date along with the girl he wants to get in bed with. Andy wanted my boyfriend to go on a date with Lola while he tries to get Lola's friend in bed. Here's the screenshot. My boyfriend agreed to the double date. That's not the worst part though. The worst part is, during that same week he was talking to Andy, my boyfriend called me one evening while he was going for a walk, telling me that I would be happy because he did something. I asked what he did, and he said in a very, I'm so proud of myself way, that he turned down a friend that tried to set him up with another woman. According to him, he told his friend verbatim, no, I have a girlfriend, now I'm realizing he just made that story up and he ended up doing the opposite, which is highly psychopathic in my opinion. Why tell me that when you actually agreed to it? He didn't actually shut it down. I felt stupid for believing it. Learning all of this, I took a screenshot of Andy's conversation with Lola and sent it to my number. I also took a screenshot of that Joanna girl messaging him on Snapchat. My boyfriend has a terrible habit of playing dumb and telling me he doesn't know what he did wrong. So to avoid that, I made sure I have evidence for when we're ready to talk. He still plays dumb, unfortunately, even with the evidence. Gives off signs of narcissistic behavior, to be honest. I broke up with him and left his apartment. I was angry. I felt betrayed. I felt a big breach of trust. I feel played and stupid. He's been trying to fix things with me since. When I left his apartment, he told me he loved me for the first time. I doubted the sincerity of it because of the timing. He told me he loved me after I caught him, laughing out loud. I know, it keeps getting worse, doesn't it? His excuse was he was trying to help a friend out and that he owed him because they usually take turns wingmanning each other when he was still single. He also says he felt bad for him because he got cheated on. He later on says he sees it as just business because they're both in sales. I'm not stupid. He called me insecure and overreacting for getting really angry and told me I should trust him and that he would never cheat on me. He doesn't seem to understand my reaction is not insecurity. My reaction stems from feeling ultimate disrespect for me and our relationship. I also feel betrayed and that all trust is gone. He said I should trust him and that he was just going on that one date to help him out. And he claims he doesn't have the intention to cheat on me. He didn't have any intention to tell me about this. I only found out because I went through his phone. He acts single when he's a taken man. He mentioned his friend Andy knew we were together, but I doubt that. And if he did, it's worse because he also didn't respect my relationship with my boyfriend. At this point, with all the lying, it's hard to keep up. He can try to talk me out of feeling this way, but my emotions still stay the same. It's not okay to do this to your girlfriend you claim you're serious with and are in love with. Additionally, one, betrayal of trust. Your boyfriend agreeing to be set up with another girl, even if it's just for a date, is a betrayal of the trust and commitment you have in your relationship. Two, emotional infidelity. Emotional cheating involves forming a deep emotional connection with someone outside the relationship which includes going on dates or entertaining romantic interests from others. Agreeing to a date setup falls into this category. Three, disrespect. Engaging in activities that imply romantic interest or availability to others shows a lack of respect for you and your relationship. It's an indication that he is open to or seeking out other romantic possibilities. Four, intent and perception. Even if no physical contact occurs, the intent and perception matter. Agreeing to be set up with another girl indicates a willingness to entertain romantic interests outside the relationship, which is harmful and deceitful. I know I'm not in the wrong here, but his unwillingness to take responsibility and deflecting blame onto me gives me the urge to speak about my experience so I can feel validated and, quite frankly, not insane. I know logically he's being manipulative, and he's downplaying the severity of my pain. Should I break up with him for good? Now for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. I hate to be this person, but really? I dare you to go somewhere in public, look around and think, 
Oh yeah, he's not the only guy in the world. Then block him. He sounds horrible. Comment 2. Yes, you should break up with him for good. I only got halfway through this post, but my god, none of those things are small. He's a walking red flag and he's embarrassing you. Now, for the update. About three weeks after the breakup, I got a text from my ex, Jake, asking to meet up and talk. At first, I was like, yeah, no idiots here, not interested. But I was curious about what he wanted to discuss, so I responded. We agreed to meet at this local diner where we used to hang out all the time. Honestly, I was kind of anxious about seeing him. When I got there, Jake looked super nervous and fidgety, which made me feel even more uneasy. Like, dude, do you have something to say or not? He started off by apologizing for his behavior, saying he wanted to work on himself and be better. I was like, okay, good for you. But then things got weird. He mentioned that he had ended things with Joanna, the girl he had lied about. This dude really thought he was going to get a gold star for that one. He insisted he was serious about making amends and asked if we could try dating again. I was like, hold up. You can't just ignore my concerns and expect me to jump back into your arms. He was all like, I was just trying to figure things out back then. Seriously? That's your excuse? During the conversation, Jake revealed that he had been seeing a therapist regularly since we broke up. I just nodded along, not sure what to feel about that. He was trying to show me how much he was working on himself, but I just wasn't convinced. Then my phone buzzed. It was a message from a mutual friend, Sarah, asking me if I had heard about Jake's new girlfriend. I was confused and confronted Jake about it. He looked totally taken aback, claiming he was still single. Yeah, right. Something was off. After leaving the diner, I ran into Sarah outside. She informed me that Jake had been spotted with a girl named Lily at a recent bar. She said Lily was known for being flirtatious and had a reputation for causing drama. Oh great, just what I needed to hear. A few days later I attended my friend's birthday party, where I heard whispers about Jake's new relationship. I confronted Sarah, and she confirmed that Jake was indeed seeing Lily. My heart sank. Why did I even bother meeting up with him? I decided to take control of the situation and sent Jake a text, demanding an explanation about his relationship with Lily. He replied, claiming he was just hanging out with her and didn't want to lose her as a friend. I was like, really? That's your excuse? Feeling totally betrayed, I decided to confront him in person. I met him at this local bar where he often hung out with friends. When I arrived, I saw Jake sitting with Lily laughing and enjoying drinks, which totally solidified my suspicions. I called him out for lying, and of course, Lily chimed in to defend him. Like, girl, you don't even know. He insisted it was just a friendship, but I made it clear that I was done being manipulated. He tried to downplay the situation, but I stood my ground and refused to let him dismiss my feelings. The next week, I attended a family dinner for my cousin's engagement. My family asked about my dating life and I mentioned the drama with Jake. My mom expressed concern about me getting back with him. Like, no mom, not happening. A few days later, I decided to cut off all contact with him. I blocked him on social media and my phone. It felt good to take control. One evening, I got a message from Sarah inviting me out for a girls' night to celebrate my newfound independence. We went to a local restaurant where we laughed and shared stories creating a positive atmosphere. During the night, Sarah mentioned that Jake had been trying to reach out to her, looking for information about me. Ugh, seriously? A week later, at another gathering with friends, I learned that Jake had officially started dating Lily. Good for them, I guess. Eventually, I found myself enjoying my new freedom and the support of my friends. I even started going out more and meeting new people. It was refreshing. I realized I didn't need a guy to make me happy. The update is that I'm planning a solo trip for myself, and I can't wait. I'm excited about this new chapter in my life. Am I the idiot for walking out on my sister-in-law's fake sympathy and refusing to play nice? My husband and I, both 36 years old, have been together for five years and married for almost two. We live in a European country. We have a house and lovely pets that we adore more than anything. We both want children, and now we feel that the time is right. We know the clock is ticking, and we also understand that it can be difficult to get pregnant. My husband's sister, Emma, and her husband, Adam, 
are also trying for a baby. They have been together for almost 10 years and have had difficulty conceiving. They are both 38 years old. Now they are receiving help through in vitro fertilization. They are trying again after a few miscarriages. I have been on the pill for eight years and stopped four months ago. Now I'm pregnant. It's still very early, but we decided to tell our family anyway. Emma is so envious of us and feels like we did it to mock them. My in-laws have always been on their side and agree. We received comments like, why didn't you wait until Emma got pregnant? I know that Emma always compares her life to others. For her, it's like a competition. She doesn't like that we have a house and they live in an apartment, we have more pets and so on. She is like this with everyone. My in-laws always help them out with money and other things. We have about the same income as Emma and Adam. My husband and I are very independent and sort things out without asking our parents. We don't feel the need to always visit our parents, so I guess we are not very close. My question is, what should we do? Can we tell them to mind their own business? Should we tell them to grow up? But in a nice way, please help. To add, thanks for all the comments. We have only told our close family, parents, and siblings. We pointed out to them that it's early in the pregnancy and we know what can happen. We take it day by day. We didn't make a huge announcement. We only told them this early because of an important upcoming event that I may or may not participate in, depending on how I feel. Emma and Adam received the in vitro fertilization through taxes. Where we live, the government pays with tax money for a number of attempts. If it doesn't work after that, they can turn to private clinics and pay for the in vitro fertilization themselves. My sister-in-law and I are not that close. We never hang out just the two of us. We see each other a few times a year for barbecues or game nights. I saw one comment suggesting that I don't understand her situation and that her reaction and her family's reaction are valid. I don't think so. I respect Emma, but I feel that she doesn't always respect me. I understand that she is struggling, but that doesn't mean I have to put my life on hold. My husband has been trying for years to talk to his parents about their behavior. He feels neglected. I admire him for being so strong and maybe forced to be independent. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one, if it were me, I would just keep to myself, not share any upcoming news until after things have happened. The sister-in-law is clearly jealous, which is not your problem to deal with. If they are not nice to you and treat you the same as others in the family, then just don't share your life with them. If someone, anyone, doesn't bring something positive to the relationship, then there doesn't need to be any type of relationship. Life is so much better when you eliminate the people who are negative all the time. Comment two, just say, thank you for letting us know you're not excited or interested in our child and don't plan to be an active part of their life. We will plan accordingly and then go low contact with all of them. There's no need to involve them in anything. Enjoy your pregnancy and the family you build with your husband. Your life is not Emma's. And while you can be sympathetic to her struggles, you don't owe her any consideration when planning your own family with your husband. Now for the update. One week after I shared the news about my pregnancy, my husband and I went to a family dinner at his parents' house. I was looking forward to it, even though I knew that Emma and Adam might be there. It was still a bit of an adjustment for me to be around them, but I wanted to make it work. The vibe was off when we arrived. Emma and Adam were late, which was actually pretty typical for them. Emma barely made eye contact with me. She said hello, but didn't come in to hug me or anything like that, which she usually does. She just kind of stood back and let Adam greet everyone. I thought maybe she was having a rough day, so I was willing to give her the benefit of the doubt. I was just happy to be with my husband and his family. During dinner, I mentioned a baby name book I started reading. I thought it might spark some conversation, but Emma scoffed and made a comment about how I didn't need to rush into things. That hurt a bit. I know she was upset about her own situation, but I didn't think it was too much to ask to be happy for me, even just a little. My husband must have sensed the awkwardness so he tried to lighten the mood by bringing up a funny story from our honeymoon. But before he could get into the story, Emma interrupted 
and insisted that their struggles with IVF were more important than a vacation story. I didn't mean to make a competition out of it, but it felt like that's what she wanted. After dinner, Emma cornered me in the kitchen while everyone else was in the living room. She accused me of being insensitive and not understanding her pain. I was taken aback. I tried to explain that I do understand her pain, but it was like she wasn't even listening. Adam walked in and immediately took Emma's side. He told me that I should be more considerate of their family's emotions. I don't know if he meant that I shouldn't have gotten pregnant or what. I left the kitchen and found my husband talking to his brother outside. They were in the middle of a conversation so I felt like it would be inappropriate for me to interrupt. They were talking about the family favoritism they both felt. My husband has felt it too, and I was glad to hear that I wasn't just being sensitive about it. I was just uncomfortable with the timing. I didn't want to add anything else to Emma and Adam's plate. Later that week, I got a text from my mother-in-law inviting me for coffee to discuss family matters. That made me a bit nervous. I didn't really know what that meant, but I agreed to meet her. During the coffee meeting, my mother-in-law brought up the importance of being sensitive to Emma's feelings. I nodded and said I understood, but she implied that the family needed to prioritize Emma's needs right now. It just felt so unfair. I was just starting to wrap my head around the fact that I was pregnant, and I was already being told that I had to tiptoe around it. It just wasn't the reaction I thought I would get. At a family birthday party for my brother-in-law, Emma made a pointed toast about real struggles. I didn't notice it at first, but I could tell that other family members were a bit uncomfortable. My husband tried to ease the situation by changing the subject to sports, but it was still kind of awkward. A few days later, I noticed some bleeding and contacted my doctor. I was really stressed about the pregnancy and didn't know what it meant. The doctor advised me to come in for an appointment, which worried me even more. At the appointment, the doctor was able to reassure me, but she did say that I needed to take some extra precautions. After the appointment, I decided to share the news with my husband. He expressed some concern, and we both agreed to keep the family informed about our situation, but we would have to tread lightly around Emma. The following week was Christmas, and my family gathered for the holiday. Emma arrived with an extravagant gift for me, which felt really insincere given everything that had happened recently. I opened it in front of everyone, and it was a baby monitor, which caused quite a stir. Emma smiled tightly while my husband looked visibly uncomfortable. I thanked Emma, but I could feel the tension spike in the room. Later that evening, I overheard Emma talking to Adam about how the gift was meant to send a message. I approached them and asked for clarification, which escalated into a heated argument. Adam accused me of being selfish, and Emma claimed I was being thoughtless. The argument attracted the attention of other family members, which made it even more chaotic. I stormed out of the house, feeling overwhelmed. After some time outside, I got a text from my husband asking me to come back in. When I returned, he explained that the family wanted to talk about the recent conflicts. The conversation shifted to the idea of family support and how we plan to navigate the pregnancy. Mini update. After the holidays, my husband and I decided to take a step back from family gatherings for a while. We felt that it was best for our mental health and the pregnancy. Emma and Adam continued their IVF treatments, and after a couple of months, they were successfully pregnant, which eased the tension between us. Am I the idiot for setting up a hidden camera to catch my wife flirting with another man? We have been together since 2015, high school sweethearts from a small town. We've had our ups and downs, as all relationships do. I've always been faithful. The worst I ever did was text another person without her knowing, and I ended up telling her, even though nothing out of line was ever said. We got married in 2020 and had our first child the same year. In 2021, through financial hardships, bouncing around job to job, trying to find somewhere we could stay afloat, I ended up driving a local delivery truck with long hours. Being gone a lot and not being able to help with our child took a toll on her. And right after our child's first birthday, I caught her Snapchatting another guy who is married and with whom I worked. 
She'd been talking to him for weeks, leaving the house alone for random reasons any chance she got, and Find My iPhone would take her to a random location where she'd sit for about 30 minutes each time and refuse to answer texts or calls until she left with no explanation. We worked through that painfully, but managed. In 2023, we had another child. Months after, we were hanging out with a friend of mine that I worked with who was also married. We rode dirt bikes together and let our children, who were relatively the same age, hang out. I caught her Snapchatting him too. On Father's Day, I took my brother and our youngest child out for a small ride on our Honda Pioneer. While I was gone, my mother had our second child, so my wife ran to the store alone. Find My iPhone again revealed her in an odd location for about 20 to 30 minutes. I began calling her, but got no answer until after she had left and driven away from the area. She claimed Find My iPhone was incorrect about her location and that her phone wouldn't connect to her vehicle, so she wouldn't answer until it did. Here we are in 2024 with three children in the mix now. The Monday the week before the 4th of July, I was called out of work shortly after arriving on the evening shift around 6 p.m. No explanation, just that I needed to come home. It turns out that Friday and Saturday night, she'd been sending two of my other married co-workers inappropriate pictures and was caught by one of their wives. This woman and my wife got into a physical altercation and my wife wanted to tell me herself before this other woman did. She then admitted that she'd sent inappropriate pictures to the aforementioned men from previous years. She swears she's never done anything in person with these guys, but she talked more provocatively to them than she ever has to me. As a 24-year-old coal miner, I've dedicated my life to making money for my family and letting her be a stay-at-home mom. I told her after this incident that I wanted a divorce. She begged and pleaded that I give her one more chance. She called her obstetrician gynecologist, saying she thought her postpartum depression was giving her thoughts of self-harm and told them she'd had an affair. They called her in, and now she is taking Zoloft and doing telemedicine therapy appointments weekly. She has basically insisted over and over again that if I left her, she'd unalive herself. She's not had an easy life, and I understand that depression, anxiety, and trauma can make you do crazy things but I have no possibility of ever being able to trust another word she says to me. She wants to fix things, and I've been doing my best, but I feel alone. I don't know what to do anymore. I've just numbed myself to the feelings and worked my life away, volunteering for extra hours. What can I do to help myself? What should I do to continue? What would you do in this situation? Thanks for any input. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one. No idiots here. She hasn't changed a thing. The fact that she's threatening to harm herself is proof of that. Don't be a hostage. Get her to put her thoughts in writing and make sure her visitation is supervised because she sounds unhinged enough to harm your child. Her actions are not your responsibility. Comment 2. Lawyer up. DNA test any children. I wouldn't trust a cheater to tell me the sky is blue. If you have proof, go to human resources about the individuals that wanted to deceive your wife. Jim. Now for the update, my wife and I had a fight about inappropriate pictures she sent to my coworkers. After that, I took a break from work to think everything through. I needed some space, you know? Since then, my wife started being more involved with the kids. She even made breakfast every morning. It was like she was a whole new person. She suggested we have a family dinner at my parents' house the following Sunday. I figured it would be a good chance to see how things were between us so I agreed. The day of the dinner came, and let me tell you, the atmosphere was just weird. My parents were excited to see us, which was nice, but I noticed my dad giving me those concerned looks throughout the evening. You know the ones. During dinner, my wife kept trying to have a conversation with me, but I was giving her short answers, like I was in a freaking job interview. My brother Jake and his wife Rachel brought up their upcoming baby shower and it made me think about our own situation. Then my dad jokingly asked if we were planning on adding to our family soon. My wife laughed way too loudly and said something about wanting to get to know each other again first. It made my skin crawl. I had to step outside for some fresh air because I was feeling so uneasy. 
My mom followed me out, asking if everything was okay between us. I told her I wasn't sure what was happening, but I was trying to understand my wife's actions. Then, my wife came outside and my mom quickly left, leaving us alone. She wanted to talk about us, but I wasn't ready for that. I suggested we focus on the kids instead, which made her visibly frustrated. The next day, while I was cleaning up after breakfast, I found a receipt buried in the trash for a hotel stay. It was for a hotel a few towns over, and the date matched a weekend I was working. I confronted her about it, and she claimed it was a misunderstanding, insisting she was just getting away for a moment. I asked her who she went with, and she hesitated before saying it was just a self-care trip. Yeah, right. I decided I needed to collect more proof because I felt like I needed to know the full truth. I went through her phone while she was in the shower, but she had locked it down tight. I couldn't even get in. I reached out to one of her old friends, thinking they might have insight into what's been happening. The friend told me my wife had been acting strange for months, staying out late and being secretive. That really got me thinking. I set up a hidden camera at home, planning to catch whatever she was doing when I wasn't around. A few days later, I reviewed the footage and saw her on a video call with a guy. They were flirting, and I decided it was time to confront her again. But this time, I wanted evidence. So I arranged for a family outing to a local amusement park, knowing it would keep her distracted. While she was focused on the kids, I slipped away and confronted the guy she was seeing about their relationship. He seemed surprised but admitted they had been talking for a while, claiming she led him on. What a jerk. I returned home and waited until the kids were asleep to confront her with the evidence I had gathered. I told her I was done being the one holding everything together. I decided to move forward with the divorce. The next day, I reached out to a divorce attorney. I planned to tell my family about the divorce during the upcoming holiday dinner. I felt empowered and ready to show my wife the consequences of her actions. Honestly, this whole thing has been such a roller coaster. I really thought we could fix things and get back to how we were, but after everything, I just can't see it happening anymore. I guess I was holding on to the idea of what we used to be, but the reality is so different now. I know it's going to be tough with the kids and all, but I need to put myself first for once. You guys really helped me see that I'm not asking for too much and I deserve way better than this. So I'm going to take it one step at a time and focus on myself and my kids. Thanks for being so real with me, everyone. Seriously, I appreciate it. Hope you all have a great night. Edit. The inappropriate pictures were sent months before the confrontation. The hotel stay was with a man from her past, but nothing physical happened. She has since stopped seeing him. The hidden camera footage was the turning point for me. The divorce process has begun and I'm focusing on my kids and myself. If you like this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.